This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. Teeth. Why smash your head in your textbook when we are here to make dentistry easy for you? So before we proceed to the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And also, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and comment as it motivates us to create more videos of this kind. For more amazing content, don't forget to visit our website where we have MCQs, courses and much more. So let's begin. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope that you all are happy no matter from where you're listening to me from. And in the last video, we had studied about the left foot one fracture. And in this video, we are going to study about the left foot two fracture. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I will leave a link in the description box below. And I would suggest you to check out that video because that is the foundation of this video. There we have discussed about all the three fractures in a concise manner so if you watch that video it will be helpful to understand this video as well okay now that you have done that let us proceed with the lepo 2 fracture okay so here we can see that this is our malnourished model so let us try to understand the fracture line in the lepo 2 fracture okay now lepo 2 fracture happens whenever there is a blow here near the level of the nasal bone okay so as you can see here this is our frontonasal suture in brown okay so our fracture line it will run let me just zoom in okay so here we go the fracture line will run anteriorly from the frontonasal suture okay and it will reach the medial side of our orbit okay and here in brown you can see this is the lacrimal bone okay so after crossing the frontonasal junction it reaches the medial wall of the orbit here it crosses the lacrimal bone and then it crosses the infraorbital margin this is the infraorbital margin okay so it crosses that infraorbital margin then it turns slightly medial to the infraorbital foramen or passes through the infraorbital foramen okay so here we have the infraorbital foramen it is passing through the infraorbital foramen in this case okay and then as you can see here it extends downward and backward okay and here if you look from the back these are the pterygoid plates right and it reaches the middle one third of the pterygoid plate. Now, as you can see here, when this fracture is on both sides bilaterally, this looks like a pyramid, right? See, this looks like a pyramid. That is why it is also known as pyramidal fracture. Now, this entire block, pyramidal shaped block, may be separated from our skull through this nasal septum and it may also involve the floor of the anterior cranial fossa okay so let us just have a revision what happened there was a force or a blow where at the level of the nasal bone okay here we have our frontonasal suture okay it extends from the frontonasal suture involves the frontal process of the maxilla okay there it goes to the medial wall of the orbit involving the lacrimal bone and the inferior orbital margin. Coming down here, here it involves or it crosses through the infraorbital foramen, just through it or it goes medial to it, right? And then it's going downward and backward and involving our pterygoid plates okay so this was about the fracture line now let us quickly go through some of the clinical features we would see in the leftward 2 fracture now since this is a fracture of the middle third of the face so there will be gross swelling of the middle third of the face and that is called as the moon faces Also, since the nasal bridge is involved, 
they can be illusion of telecanthus called the pseudo telecanthus now what is telecanthus telecanthus is the increased distance between the medial corners of both eyes here the distance between the two pupils will be same okay but since the nasal bridge is involved it may appear as if the distance between the medial corner of one eye to the medial corner of one eye has increased so if it has really increased that will be telecanthus in cases where we have naso ethmoido orbital fracture means nasal bone orbital bone and the ethmoid bone all have fractured in that cases it can be a telecanthus real telecanthus not a pseudo but pseudo will be when when the swelling over this area will give an illusion that the distance has increased i hope i made it clear there will be peri orbital edema so it will give a appearance of raccoon eyes so this will be seen in both lefort 2 and lefort 3 the raccoon eyes will be seen in both lefort 2 and lefort 3 if we have injury of the infraorbital nerve they can be paresthesia of the cheek they can be step formation or say step deformity at the infraorbital rim or the nasofrontal junction now imagine a blow at the nasal level in such situation the whole maxilla can be pushed backwards posteriorly that is the retropositioning so when this is pushed posteriorly let's see this is pushed posteriorly you can imagine the teeth will also go behind right posteriorly in such cases there will be class 3 malocclusion and the face will become like a dish dish face deformity also there will be lengthening of the face why because obviously the middle third of the face is separating from the skull okay so there will be lengthening of the face if you examine such a patient clinically and you grasp the alveolus of the maxilla in the anterior region you can feel that this entire segment is moving and this movement will be detected here at the infraorbital margin and at the nasal bridge so these were some of the features of the lefort 2 fracture i hope that you found the video helpful and if you want me to cover the lefort 3 fracture also do let me know in the comment section below and also don't forget to subscribe like because it really motivates me to create more videos of this kind so till we meet next time take very good care of yourself and i'll see you in the next video allah fez